Production of bioenergy from microfuel cells, hybrid systems, or anaerobic processes in wastewater treatment. A literature review by Roswell Salinas. Presented for Wastewater Quality Engineering, class imparted by Dr. Kim. The climate crisis and the energy crisis. Our planet Earth finds itself within a dangerous and precarious position due to facing an environmental climate crisis, triggered by the use of fossil fuels, mostly oil and gas whose usage causes global heating, previously known as global warming, by raising the levels of CO2. In addition, fossil fuels are limited in stock, every day shorter in supply, slowly coming towards an inevitable end, less and less capable of fulfilling the world's energy needs in this oncoming lack of energy sources called the energy crisis. The fact that the COVID-19 pandemic decreases the usage of fossil fuels created an inverted crisis where the problem is the government has too much fossil fuels, they don't know how to dispose of them in a profitable way. However, this will not prevent the coming and possible inevitable climate crisis. So far, it has only delayed it for a year at the most. The world is running out of time, desperately needing to replace fossil fuels with new alternative sources of energy to at the same time go beyond being environmentally friendly. Both crises must be solved at once, as swiftly as possible. Some of the rain forecasting the environmental crisis is due to the wastewater treatment plants doing an incomplete job, only removing the contaminated water from the sewage systems and carelessly disposing the water into the environment. As a species, humans are the only species to contaminate. To become a sustainable society, humanity needs to find a way to undo the damage created. Many possible solutions have been analyzed. The world is seeking to shift towards a type of energy that is unlikely to run out in the foreseeable future into what is known as renewable energy. Wastewater treatment presents itself an interesting opportunity to undo some of the damage that it has created to solve all energy crises at the same time. What if it were possible to create energy from the disposal of waste? One of these technologies are under investigation is the topic of this literature review, the production of bioenergy from microbial fuel cells in wastewater. Bioenergy and microfuel cells chambers. A scientist named Michael Chris Potter discovered the existence of the microbial fuel cells in 1911. The start of serious research on the topic began in the 80s. MFC consideration for wastewater treatment started in 91. In 2003 came the biggest breakthrough, called an anodic MFC, due to sending the energy directly into the anode. It is potentially advantageous due to its potential to halve the cost of the energy needed in wastewater treatment. In 2007, MFC applications are limited due to the low power density of 1,000 watts meter square. Research is to improve the performance. Microfuel cells are composed of two chambers. The anaerobic, which is positive, and call it also the anodic chamber. The aerobic, which is negative due to the cathode, and is also called cathodic surgery. The cathode has an oxygen chamber on the aerobic side, but the orange and aerobic side, it cannot have oxygen in it. Both chambers are composed of the same materials. Graphite of two types, normal and felt. Carbon of two types, paper and coat. PT of two types, normal and black. And reticulated vitreous carbon, RBC. The part in the middle, the yellow one, is called the proton exchange membrane, PEM. Each MFC by itself is a bioreactor that turns chemical energy into chemical bonds and then into electrical energy. This happens through catalytic reactions of microorganisms under anaerobic conditions. Theoretically, most microbes can be used as catalysts. What if instead of disposing waste and water, we could use the microbial bacteria and wastewater to create energy from it? MFC is created through anaerobic processes. There are two types of MFC. The MFC hybrid bioenergy systems, which are used in conjunction with other anaerobic bioenergies, like biogases, and the non-hybrid MFC, standalone MFCs, which are used on their own, without other bioenergies produced. The non-hybrid MFCs are calculated through the Colombo's efficiency equation. We also have the pumping equation. There are three advantages of MFCs. Low energy consumption due to MFC systems avoidance of aerobic oxygen energy consumption, which consumes 50% of the energy. MFCs require an anaerobic process. Low and large production. Due to the anaerobic process in MFC cathodes, 
accumulating little secondary sludge, thus minimizing the use of the second clarifier. Energy recovery from wastewater treatment plants, reducing energy bills. Nitrogen and methane removal are an option. It remains possible within these parameters. This biogas can be removed and sold separately for extra profit or used for biogas energy generation, which in some cases exceeds the profit and energy generation of MFCs itself. Combining both energy processes is ideal as it reduces energy and prices. Loading rates are 10 to 20 kilograms of COD over meters day. The non-hybrid MFCs, a good method to make MFCs more effective at generating energy, is to use the spiral spacers to optimize the analyte fraud in the local wastewater treatment plants to do them being effectively higher horizontally and vertically at higher rates of recirculation and organic loading rates. It is also investigated that the MFC should not be used for primary sludge due to the energy generation not being significant enough when applying out of space to cause any energy reductions. However, it is optimistic about using the it to treat primary effluents in municipal wastewater treatment plants. We can see the orange is the spare spacers that create savings. These are the various types of MFC hybrid bioenergy systems which have chemical processes, biological processes, and physical processes. These are the types that we are going to focus on all are to anaerobic digestion. We have the phototropic and the dark chemotropic. The phototropic can harness hydrogen removal, but that is not the focus of this video. We are going to focus on dark hemotropic, which whose energy processes can make beer fermentation, hydrogen through biogas removal, electricity through two methods by using microfuel cells, and by using methane conversion in conjunction with microfuel cells. The methane biogas removal. Methane is produced by a methanogenic reaction, anaerobic digestion, which I'm going to explain later, which has been going for a century, and in 1974 resulted in the discovery of the OPFO anaerobic large bank, UASB, which is used on 60% of the anaerobic base plants worldwide, as it retains microbes without immobilization on carry material. Electricity and methane are both interlinked to each other, as bioelectricity with microfuel cells can be post-converted for methane, as is hydrogen, we can create bioelectricity for methane. These are the chemical reactions for most of the microfuel cell hybrid bioenergy system. Highlighted in yellow are the ones for methane, I am microfuel cells, and we can see other ones for fermentations. These are the names of the microbial strains for fermentations used across the food industry worldwide. Microfuel cell bioelectricity converted from methane CH4. Various successful conversions from methane have been done into electricity. But microfuel cell technologies are not quite at the required level, either due to only producing 0.7 to 1 volts at most, much less than is hoped. They will require more voltage to create any meaningful reduction of cost. However, by linking microfuel cells together, they can increase their charge, their voltage. The most successful optimization effort was an anadophile consumption solution on a dual chamber for an aerobic lodge with a glucose substrate. A seed handled a match power of 3,600 megawatts over meter square. The simulatory metal reaction bacteria DSRB is used to transfer the power to metal. However, the small savings in power may be, they will optimize the system. The aerobic algal bacterial falls are also an option. A 2000 research proved the prominent algae presence on high grade ponds could be a source for biomass feedstock for renewable energy in wastewater treatment. Key algae species investigated were Micratinium synthesmus chlorella penate diatoms. A possible solution may be the co-production of algal biofuels. This will imply farming algae to select breeding, placing it in the way of its water so it will help clean water with its oxygen, then harvesting the algae for biofuel in the harvesting season. Monetary savings will come from having the energy needed for wastewater treatment. If plants generate more energy than needed, they can make more profit by selling the energy excess to electrical companies, yearly generation 7 times 10 to the 6 cattle one. 
three main objectives were investigated. The direct retention time, which was better at two days than three. The results of investigating nine paddlewood mid-set open ponds, which we can see on the picture on the left, at a channel velocity of 27 centimeters per second, at a depth of 3.2.3 meters square area and 0.3 meters depth, at a water resource recovery facility in California. Each set of the three ponds that we can see on the left was operated at a different level. The polyculture compensation effects on methane yield and methane production rate models were also investigated. Although it mentions the price of algae remains more expensive than current fossil fuels, but however, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this is feasible at least for this time to experiment with a cheaper fuel and see what performance we can achieve. And it also proves the feasibility of anaerobic digestion. The aerobic alpha bacteria fuels, however, it's also worth noting that this is an aerobic process of bioenergy due to the amount of oxygen in water that is produced by the algae plants. An aerobic process cannot have oxygen in them. The absence of oxygen kills the conductivity of the bioelectricity or the microfuel cells and leaves a space for other gases in the water. So algae processes are not compatible with the microfuel cells, but they are compatible with the methane CH4 production. So it have to be one of the other. Methane process or microfuel cells, unless a way is found to isolate the algae from the rest of the anaerobic oxygenless process. This is the microfuel cells, but fused with the solar energy modifications. It is called the phantom solar power, which follow electrical cells, the PSC. And we also have the microfuel cells on the other side. This is another way of doing, of achieving the same thing with solar light. So we can see the solar light enter to the left side. On this one enters to the orange side and what it says like radiation. This video explains multiple microfuel cell technology that are currently being explored. All sources agree that microfuel cell input systems produce higher voltages and better results than the standalone microfuel cell systems. Even at the current earliest stage of development of hybrid microfuel cells, the main microfuel cells hybrid bioenergy is covered where biogases like methane, PEC, which stands for photoelectric cells of solar energy, and aerobic bioalgae. Acknowledging how algae have been used over the years to improve microfuel cell rotation times and the voltages of bioelectrical processes. The energy for photochemical processes can be solar to reduce cost. However, it remains a major problem to increase the power output of microfuel cells as it decreases on large volumes. The water in certain regions has low conductivity and a pH buffering is effect. Most of the labs operate under the perfect conditions, which are disproven on wastewater technet pans of the real field. Other problems include the cell voltage reversal and ionic short circuiting, which makes the voltage unpredictable. The individual standalone non hybrid microfuel cells carry a voltage that is too weak to produce any significant amount of energy savings or reduction, but the micro Full cells that are hybrid by energy systems show promise working better stacked together with multiple bioenergy systems, especially biogases working together that cause reduction, which is the most important thing currently to make it feasible. The theoretical maximum value for microfuel cells is 1.14 volts, and right now, at most, we are at 0.7 to at least 1, which is 0.14 short of the 1.14 volts. The average mass energy has increased from 0.7 to H volt, but we are still too far. A tactic attempt is to add iron salts to increase conductivity of water which has worked at increased conductivity. The pH of 3 is ideal for the Phantom MFC solar system. These are the references that I use for the video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice weekend. Please give me a good grade. These are the sources for the pictures. Thank you very much.